All right, awesome. All right, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Smith, uh, the team captain here to present to you all of our project uh, Pac-Man Data Streamer. Uh, my team members include uh, Kevin Lynn, uh, Jeffrey Kerr, Luisa Manuel, and Noah De Jesus. And uh, Kevin and Chaya, our professor, uh, we'd like to thank who uh, helped us guys through the uh, project through uh, the fall and the spring. So as you can see here for the title, uh, we're given the task to use uh, Microsoft's Data Streamer. Uh, along with our choice to use the classical arcade game Pac-Man to extract useful information that can be analyzed. Right. Uh, okay, so Data Streamer is an add-on to Microsoft Excel uh, used to connect uh, third-party devices to stream data off from in real time. So you can use like devices like the Arduino Uno or Raspberry Pi to make it work or any compatible microcontroller uh, to connect to Excel. Um, Excel is well known for storing data as well as its functions, create uh, meaningful tables and graphs for many applications. Uh, with Data Stream, however, the amount of potential for our project is even greater. With data being streamed into Excel, uh, the results become dynamic uh, with each trial run by the device. So we would no longer need to fill in the data ourselves and it's just being fed to in, in Excel automatically. So uh, the reason why we chose the uh, data streamer is actually because uh, it was like the last choice given to us from class. But uh, since everyone chose uh, the other choices, we're given this one. Uh, but the, uh, we were actually able to choose what we wanted to data stream with. So for that, we uh, chose Pac-Man to, st uh, to uh, stream data from it into Excel. Uh, we believe Pac-Man would be a great fit uh, since it's a well-known game and it's simple to play. Uh, we also thought we would enjoy it too, since there's not like a lot of stuff going on in the game when you're playing and and to analyze all the data and such. Okay, so uh, for our project, why it stands out is um, the reason is because this one is unique to all the other applications for Data Streamer, is that we actually do not require a physical uh, microcontroller to be connected to Excel. Uh, so what I just uh, said is something like a contradiction through uh, what I said earlier, where we need like an Arduino Uno or a Raspberry Pi. Um, but actually, it turns out DayStreamer has uh, more options to stream data off from. Uh, uh, so, for example, you have you can. There's one way you can do it through what's called comma separated files. You take those files and you just import it to DayStreamer, and data gets streamed off at a steady rate. Another way is to use the uh, software development kit SDK for uh, Windows 10 to build a program that connects Excel to the same machine. And this program would be running in the background. Uh, and as it, acts, it acts as like a middleman between the uh, Pac-Man and Excel. Um, so the obvious advantage here is that one does not need to buy any or equipment, like a microcontroller or, or any sensors to connect to Excel. It's through your, your machine. You only need a Windows, of course, to run it and install and use Excel. Uh, so when our group started researching DayStreamer, what, it, what it's known for, uh, one of the things that first came up was uh, the hacking stem. So where this was coming from is that there's like uh, these many small applications that could use like in a, in a classroom in the middle or high school. And for example, like you can take with, uh, an, an anonymometer and uh, you can like stream the wind speed, uh, the current wind speed of what's going on into Excel. Or you can like uh, use like an electroconductivity sensor that can use it to determine like the electroconductivity of a solution. So, but uh, with the pandemic, though, uh, we could not like uh, gather up and uh, see what it looks like. It was if we were like in a classroom, we couldn't really do that. Okay, so now uh, here's a demo. It's very short. Um, right now. Uh, you can see that the uh, CSV has been ported to Excel and it skip a little bit for the uh, data to be loaded up to 20 seconds. And then uh, shortly, the data will start streaming. So you can see from here in the table, the data gets uh, streamed in to Excel. Here's some other sheets, the front end. So you can see here, they also get streamed in here as well. There's some options called, uh, you have latest stamps. I'm gonna click highest scores. You can see the highest score is 7,010 right there. And this one is the, the highest of them all. And here's a uh, guess who overall got the most uh, deaths. And then this is the death location, so you can see everybody uh, where they died in the game. And that's the demo, uh, partially, of our project. Not all of it. And if I can get to, uh, I think I get to the next slide. There we go. 
Okay, so now for the key mechanic uh, of this project it was to obviously pull the data off from Pac-Man while it's running and be put into Excel. Uh, the data can then be filled into tables and graphs, which may be analyzed in such a way that is useful. Uh, there are many attributes that come from it while uh, it's being ported to Excel, including the time elapsed, which is just the amount of time players uh, playing Pac-Man. Latest temp, that's just like a timestamp of when he played. High score, obviously, how score of the game he got. Uh, deadliest ghost is uh, the most common ghost who collided with Pac-Man. And then death location is where uh, the player, where specifically the player had actually collided in the game. So with these attributes, you can compare them with other people and then you can find uh, new relationships. So uh, in the game, for example, uh, the ghost, the red one, Linky, uh, if you know him, he, he goes from uh, time to time uh, on the upper left corner of the game board. Um, but for example, if you were, if the player were to keep colliding him in this upper left corner, then it should be like a correlation between the death location and the deadliest ghost, because Blinky is the most one or the high, uh, most common ghost getting the player, and as well as that less specific location. Another example is that if you, um, the player improves their game every time, that, uh, there should also be a correlation between the time elapsed, latest attempt, and the highest score. Uh, so near. I already mentioned some of these that we uh, put into our project, but there are a few that I didn't mention yet. Uh, so Glitch, the one with the uh, two fishes, uh, is where we can you make your own website and in their case, uh, run the game using JavaScript. The game's code was modified to create and send CSV files when the player finishes their session. Uh, the CSV file may then be imported to Excel's data streamer to simulate a, a microcontroller at a steady rate. And then MySQL would have been used in our product to store all the data in every player session. Okay, so for the whole MVP, our project, what it, uh, what it is, is that once, uh, so once you collide with the ghost right here, um, in this case, Inky, what will happen is that the player was already entered their name, but, and then after that, they got a CSV file, they just uh, straight in downloaded it in their browser. And then what you do is you would, uh, import this file to Excel. And assuming you have like a lot of data, it'll get it imported to there at a steady rate. And it gets all the data like time lapse, quadrant of death, ghosts and such. All right, so now the following slides are going to talk about what we need to get the uh, minimum viable product into a full bone product uh, ready for release. So first, uh, stakeholder request. So in order to become, uh, for this project to become a product, we needed more data for analysis. Um, and that data would uh, have to be fed in real time. And that includes uh, the key, for example, being pressed, what key are currently pressing. And then also the current character positions, including Pac-Man, the ghosts. If you have, with these types of data, we would have been able to increase the scope of our analysis. Our plan was to build like a path tracker where the player has their path recorded over time. The path would reset each after each level, so it wouldn't become a mess to look at. Uh, also, the current closest ghost uh, would also be shown in Excel. In the end of the session, the average uh, of the closest ghost would have been put in the table in the front end, since the data would need to be streamed in real time. Uh, in that case, CSV files would no longer be necessary. Instead, you need to get a program that utilizes the SDK of Windows 10 and uh, and this also still keeps uh, up holds our goal of being uh, equipment free. You don't have to buy anything. It still keeps that in mind. So another request is that we need we need to get a uh, a database, and what we would have chosen was be uh, MySQL, and then this is where we would have sent like all the data from uh, all the players' data to from Excel to MySQL. And then other people will be able to view other players and that way they can learn even more like about their plays and such. And then lastly, or um, one of the other requirements is security. Um, so for the database, uh, in addition, we need a login page. It would have required like a username, a password and the CAPTCHA. And as well, uh, the uh, password would have been encrypted using the advanced encryption standard to enhance security even further. And then some other future considerations, uh, just more data for analysis for games business. Also like other ways to 
connect to Excel as well. Uh, besides like CSV files or like some program, we hope that there's another way, some more options as well. And that concludes the presentation. Uh, any questions? Suppose I wanted to do this with a different game. How much of your existing work would carry over? Yeah, that would really depend what game because it depends how much data we want to get out of that. It really depends. Can I speak, by the way? Uh, I'm also a member of this yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, or I think so, right? Uh, can my other team member speak too? Uh, go for it, yeah. Yes, uh, since that would lead to some ambiguity between because since you might try to say a variety of games or a business, you would need to first off consider what is at least like the basics that you would want to have what data to have. So it's a, a future use for this rather than just games and things that you, you talked about uh, the temperature sensor, I think, and it, would this be useful in uh, in industry, say, doing product testing, maybe, or something where you're collecting data from sensors? Uh, what, uh, type, what type of products? Well, it's like you, you talked about a, uh, like a temperature sensor, maybe, or um, maybe motion of some sort. It, it, Um, I don't, I think I, I don't understand a bit. Can you explain a bit more just in case I might say something wrong? I'm sorry. Uh, I think I might have something to say about that. Our project uses data streamer and I think data streamer could do stuff like that, but our project really focused heavily on Pac-Man. Like your question earlier was about, could we apply this to another game? Well, we kind of use data streamer heavily into Pac-Man. It'd be, I mean, we could use data streamer on a different game if we wanted but we'd have to like do more into the project and make it more specific to whatever game or whatever you'd want. But we were using data streamer on something. Data streamer is like just a tool that we had. Th does that answer your question, I guess? Yeah, yeah, okay. that's good. If you um, if you were going to connect the game directly to the data streamer, uh, have you, have you thought about like sort of what language or tools you would use to do that? Yes. So well, it is possible. And then we have like a there's like a template available. If we use that template, the template actually is a it contains a C sharp. So if if we use that, we the language would end up being C sharp and back on. On the Excel side or on the. Um... On this, it's, like, it's like a separate, yeah. yeah, like, the, I guess the game, yeah, it's the game that, the game had to be in C-sharp then, because the Windows uh, software development kit is in C-sharp, we had to match that up, unless there's a way to sort of uh, bridge that too. Okay. And then in the Excel spreadsheet, did you use any macros or anything like that, or was it all just sort of formulas? And, uh... It's mostly formulas. Uh, I don't know, we didn't have as much time about to learn about macros, unfortunately. Uh, I'll throw a, a question of my own in there, uh, or I, I got a couple. So what's the overhead of, uh, so you, you have Pac-Man, which is kind of like your target. What's the overhead of everything else that's running uh, like, is this something that doesn't really take much resources or is it somewhat intensive? Uh, like, could you, what, what's the insight there? It's, it should be, in theory, just be Excel, uh, be uh, constantly getting data from the game. That should be it. Like, there shouldn't be anything else between those. Well, for MVP, it's actually a little different because uh, Pac-Man was in JavaScript on a browser. You would have to. It's like they're kind of isolated. It's, they're not directly connected, actually. Um, you need the CSV files would be your bridge to get to Excel. 
Okay. And in fact, with the sort of CSV files, another question I had, um, so it was mentioned that, um, like Windows was mentioned repeatedly, but Excel does also run on Macs. And I was just kind of curious um, how, uh, how is the software itself very closely tied specifically to Windows or is it just any platform that can run uh, Excel? Uh, we actually haven't tested it on a Mac, or at least the uh, team hasn't, I believe. We don't know for sure how it will be. I could probably answer that. In the beginning, at the fall last year, I'm using a Mac, and I actually had trouble trying to you know, use Excel. So in the end, um, it would have taken us too much time to try on a Mac, so I decided to just use Windows instead but to, in consideration of time. I mean, you could, you could probably, you probably can use it on a Mac, but like I said, I just needed to make more research, which we didn't have. Uh, are there any any other questions for our speakers? All right. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and end. Uh, we can end the talk. Thank you very much uh, to the data streamer group.